Well, it doesn't mean we can, we can hit a child. Bro, I have been crushing these. Shit, oh, genius. These metrics don't make any sense whatsoever. You would expect, let's be real here. That's not even like a weird sexual thing. Good morning. Uh, something I've been thinking long and hard about is well, something I'm not really used to. You remind me of a season one Fortnite bush camper. I'm just saying, I think I see that one. Uh, today's meant to be like day four of the sauna series. Oh, hello. You enjoy that nice view of the back of the car? Yeah, I need to sort out whatever this situation is. I think I'm gonna order a clamp that goes on the headrest. There's, there's a reason why I like this over the normal shot of having it down here and looking up. It's kind of, I, I, think, I think this is quite smart. You might be like, yeah, don't care, Oliver, you're a bit of a dumbass, which is fair. Um, when you're sat in the car with someone and you're having a chat with them, you're not looking at them from down here, like where the gear stick should be, are you? You're looking at them from up at this angle. Jeez, you're a bit lopsided. So my thinking is, this seems more, I don't know, uh, kind of seems like you're having a chat with a friend. <laughs> you sat in the car with a friend, that's my thinking. Anyway, uh, I forgot, I think there was something out, yeah. But I, so filming day four, I'm not sure where I'm gonna go. I, f I still feel awful. Um, but I think, like I'm super congested as you can tell, but I think actually go, having some kind of sauna session, like using some essential oils to see if they help decongest me might be quite good actually. I think those are the lines I'm gonna be going on. Um, so I'll have a little look into that, but I feel I just, I'm just tired, like I haven't been sleeping well. Anyway, one of the other thoughts I had was, <laughs> just a side note, which I guess everything is. We were at Thanksgiving at my wife's grandparents house and there was some extended family from so her her mum's dad got remarried and then her mum's dad's wife's uh, son extended family were there and I'd never seen them, some of them before and I saw them sat at a table and there's so much going on in my wife's family that they're, like, they're just not mixing, for better or for worse. And in my head, like, I'm thinking two thoughts. I'm thinking one, I want to go over there and start a conversation because there's not very many of them and they're all kind of on their own and it feels like they're being left out. So there's that part of me. And then the other part of me is thinking, or it would be good for you to like force yourself out of your comfort zone to go and have this conversation. Like I know nothing about them. I don't know their names nothing so then I'm like I did go over and speak to them and have a brief chat and whatnot but I'm thinking oh gosh that guy hasn't oh he has made it well done a big 18 wheeler doing a u-turn in the road um, and I'm thinking to myself did I do that for selfish reasons or did I do that because I wanted them to get integrated in, like to make them feel more comfortable. I think it can be both. It's not too dissimilar to giving money to a homeless person, let's say. Do you do that because you feel bad for, because you want them to have some money? Or do you do it because it makes you feel better? I don't think those two are mutually exclusive, which means I don't think those two are, they don't have to be separate of each other. Yeah, and I guess I'm okay with either of those. Like, I'm, I'm okay with being selfish, with doing something for a selfish reason, especially if it provides some sort of benefit 
to the other person. Like in this case, let's say I went and had this conversation because selfishly I wanted to test myself and see if I could, you know, I had the confidence to go and do it. But, you know, the, what came out of that was making them feel more comfortable. You know, maybe talking to me made them feel even more uncomfortable, who knows? <laughs> and then I've got my, my note down here of, of things I thought about to talk yesterday. Uh, oh, school zone, all right, we can hit a child if we like. Well, it doesn't mean we can, we can hit a child. It just means that they're more available to hit. Right, it's like it's like fishing in a small pond with lots of fish. You're likely to get a good catch. Same with going through a school zone. You're likely to hit a child. Much more likely to hit a child. I've probably gone too far with this topic, haven't I? That wasn't something I wrote down, let's be clear. <clears throat> Some other things. I did see Musk this morning. I don't know what... Uh, I don't know what interview it was, but he was being asked about some of his comments and how he feels about advertisers pulling themselves. And he says, go F yourself to the advertisers that are essentially blackmailing him to not share his opinions. And I think this is huge. This is huge because He's essentially saying, I think there's going to be a shift in social media and instead of it being about advertising, I don't know where it's going to go from there, but right now social media is all about ad spend. Like these social media companies are being run because other companies are paying them with ad dollars. Right? So if this is going to change away from the advertising market, the advertising model, where are they going to get their money from? I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a shift in a, a few years. But I do think that this is a, this is a big shift in a greater scheme, of, greater, a grander scheme of things. I don't know. We're seeing on social media people are starting to move away from the inauthentic influencers, right? The, the influencers who live the perfect lifestyle and going to more of the people who live a raw lifestyle and share that raw lifestyle. And I think brands are going to have to start thinking that way too. They're going to have to start, if they're going to continue their model, they're going to have to start finding creators and changing up their marketing models. I'm seeing if Rugi is in the window. He's not. They're going to have to start changing their model uh, to do longer term partnerships where the collaboration seems, uh, I don't want to say partnership, but more like a bond. So like instead, yeah, instead of those, like, we'll pay you for one to two sponsored posts, it's going to be, we'd like to give you some money for a year and you can wear our product and do what you will. But if I think about doing that, if a brand comes to me, let's say we set up some kind of partnership, to me, that it's a binary to me. The partnership is either, okay, this is, like, this is great, like I like your product, I'm happy to talk about your product because I like it and use it, but you have zero say over what I do or say. You're more than welcome to cancel the contract if I say something you don't like but I'll be open about that and you're not going to be able to dictate what I do say or what I believe none of that whatsoever so it has to be raw right in my head that makes so much sense and I am more than happy to lose out on money so that I'm not dictated to and like the last thing I'd want to do is deceive someone who looks up to me. To me, this is kind of a weird way to put it, but if, if you're watching this video and you trust in me, uh, you would respect me the same way that my son respects me. So I wouldn't say something to my son that is untrue or wrong just for, you know, for my own benefit. And I equally wouldn't do the same thing on this camera. 
would step away. I would walk away for sure. Can't be having that. All right, see you inside. Bro, I have been crushing these horse suitors. I'm not gonna lie as well. When I was younger, I used to have these for bad throats, surprisingly. And I always used to think hall soothers was just all one word, but it's halls soothers, isn't it? She, oh, genius. Uh, <clears throat> all right, a couple things. So one of them, I thought uh, we could go through like some metrics that go on TikTok to kind of show you what a viral video looks like versus a video that doesn't perform well. And then looking at a video that recently I posted, which has the best metrics of any video I have posted. And it's just not getting the view. Like It just doesn't make any sense. So I think we'll, I think that would be interesting to go through. I've pulled the screenshots. So let's, I'm trying to think what's the best way to show this for you to see. If I do, hmm, because like, I want to do like a comparison of the three videos. Um, well, I guess I'll show you a video. Let's do this. Let's let's go with. A video that has done. So here's magnet fishing, 8.7 million views. This was fairly recently. Um, 8.7 million views. Let me, if I, I'm overthinking this, aren't I? I'll go to the side here. Maybe I can fit between. No, I'm gonna go this side. I can fit between them. <laughs> All right, 8.7 million views. I think this is aside from a video that I deleted from a while back that is no longer fitting, this is my highest viewed video. Funnily enough, I filmed this video in like an hour before I had to go into the office for work. So 8.7 million views, and we have our other metrics in here, but we're just gonna look at engagement graph at the moment. So let's keep in mind that this video has gone through its performance. So the metrics now are probably at a point where um, they've dropped because it's reached such a wide audience that it became uninteresting to another audience, right? So <clears throat> I always say that at three seconds, if you have above 70%, you're fantastic. This isn't the way I want to do it. This isn't this isn't it. Let's do okay, shot by shot. All right. So first video is gonna be the magnet fishing, 8.7 million views. Next video is going to be the sauna video, very recent, and it's doing pretty well, one million views. And that was only posted like a couple of days ago. So that's currently doing very well. And then we have this anomaly that doesn't make any sense. The part two of the sauna, 31,000 views. All right, let me get into this, okay. So we'll start off looking at the three second mark. For the magnet fishing, the three second mark is at 66%. The first day of the sauna is at 72%. The day two of the sauna is at 74%. So that's much higher than the others. And I know that's only a couple of percent, but that's, that's huge at the beginning. Next, we're gonna look at the 10 second mark. So for magnet fishing, we're looking at 46%. For day one of the sauna, 49%, so higher. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Day two sauna, 64%. That is so much higher. Then we move on to the midway point. So for magnet fishing, the midway point is 42 seconds, and we're looking at 32%. We're 
which means that 32% of the people that started watching are still watching at this point. Then we go to day one sauna, 38% are still watching at the midway point. Day two of the sauna, 49% are still watching. That's almost 50% are still there at the midway point. Okay, so you see how this doesn't make any sense? Then we go to the final part. The end of the video for magnet fishing, we have 24% still remaining, which I'd say that's still very good. You'd, you'd want like maybe 25% or higher for a viral video. For day one of the sauna, 24% still watching. For the day two of the sauna, 34% are still watching at the end of the video. That's 10% higher. That's, that's huge. So that doesn't make any sense, does it, whatsoever? And then it doesn't, <laughs> we go on again and it doesn't make any sense. So you, typically for a video to go viral, you want the majority of your views to come from the For You page. Now, none of this is um, money that's been put into ads on the videos. So this is purely what we would call organic reach. So a video that is performing well because people are enjoying it on the For You page, so it gets served to more and more people. So you can see here, like 98% is from the For You page for the magnet fishing. Oops. Then... For day one of the sauna, 97, 98%, okay. And then day two of the sauna, for you is at 5%. Personal profiles at 50%, which would suggest the people are watching the first video going to my profile to find day two, right, which is this video, and then they're watching it. And it's just stupidly high. Now these, these metrics don't make any sense whatsoever. You would expect all of this for this video to do way better than any of these other two videos. But it's gotten point, yeah, you know, it's gotten 3% of the views of the video the day before. So the day before got a million views and this video has gotten 3% of that. Now, I think there's an interesting, I realized this this morning, there's, there's a mental health aspect to it, but I realized this morning that one of the huge benefits to me of making content is that I've started to, or I'm now in a place where I, I just don't care what other people think. Like I'm doing something because I enjoy it. But thinking about that a bit deeper, then why am I posting videos online and why does it affect me if it didn't get good views or not? Or like good engagement, like people didn't like the video. And so I was, been trying, I was trying to break this down. I love the video making process. But then imagine if TikTok or wherever I would post it doesn't exist, would I still enjoy making videos that much? I'm not sure, I'll never know unless I just don't post, which is stupid. So <laughs> let's, let's be real here. And how do I feel when I spend time on a video that I think I, like that I really enjoy doing and I think people are gonna enjoy? How do I feel when that doesn't perform well, when it doesn't get very many views? I feel that I didn't make something that people enjoyed. I feel that I made something that people didn't enjoy. That's a better way to put it. And so I feel guilty. I'm like, I've, people have this expectation of what to expect from me and I haven't delivered upon that. And that, that you could say that's kind of a victim complex, but I think that really comes from what I want people to get out of the videos, entertainment and a message that's in the videos. Then where was I going? People enjoying it. Oh yeah, the mental health side of, of this. Like let's say I didn't have some any of my other videos that were doing well at the moment. 
I would look at these metrics, and this has happened before, but never to this extent, where a video looks like it's performing really, really well from like these metrics standpoint, but from a view count standpoint, awful. And that feeling, that like instant feedback you get, it's like if you're at work or let's say at school and your boss or your teacher looks at your work and says, that is terrible. That is absolutely awful. How does that make you feel? That makes you feel terrible, doesn't it? You know, whereas the flip side, if you do something and it's really good and your boss or your teacher comes over to you and they're like, dude, this is the best thing I've ever seen from you. This is so good. Congratulations. Well done. The contrast there is it's either one side or the other. Like you very rarely have a post that kind of like fits in the middle. It's, it, it's one feeling or the other, which is strange because for my personality type, my highs are never normally too high and my lows are never normally too low. Like I'm pretty mellow. My voice sounds like crazy mellow at the moment, but I'm normally pretty mellow in the middle. But I do have those ups and downs with that, that feeling for when I see how a video is done. And I wouldn't be surprised. In my life, I've been through a lot of downs. Uh, within, let, let's take this within context, right? Like I'm not, I was never living in poverty. I was never struggling to find where my next meal came from. I was never struggling where, you know, to find a roof over my head. None of that kind of stuff. Just things like um, small amounts of bullying or being short, being teased, uh, not making the sports teams because I was too small or young, or something like that. And then, you know, lots of other things that are a bit more detailed in life, like um, having, like being fired from my job with a month left on my visa and having to leave the country to go back home when the company told me they were doing all my visa process. Uh, and the firing wasn't because of lack of performance because I'd just gotten a promotion like three months earlier. So things like that, okay? And it's gotten me to a place where I'm, I'm able to assimilate, I'm able to think through situations instead of just like, spiraling down. And I think for people that haven't had those experiences with social, uh, that now do social media, I think in a couple of years, we're gonna see so many people with men who are creators or influencers with mental health issues because they, they're having to deal with these highs and lows all the time. And I look at those as like chemicals going through the body, not just, oh, you feel sad, uh, okay. Like it's literally just chemicals going through your body that make you feel a certain way. Um, and you can alter that. I believe that you can alter all of those chemicals in you. So, yeah, I think, I think we're going to see some real issues with creators and influencers over the next few years that just don't know how to deal with the ups and downs of creating content because of that immediate feedback loop of a video doing well or not doing well. I don't know, was that, was this all useful to go through the metrics? Maybe we can go more in depth sometime. And, and of course, this doesn't take into account the um, engagement metrics like likes, comments, shares, follows or saves, stuff like that. Um, but when, when you look at an algorithm on a social media platform, it's more about what is the goal of that social media platform is to keep people on the app from video to video so that they get served ads in between videos and they're enjoying their experience on the app. And so I would say retention, how long you can keep someone on a video for is a better metric of how much someone enjoyed the video versus a video that got lots of likes. Cool, it's about two o'clock. I'm gonna take a quick break. Oh, I did. 
and then well, and then I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use my script and try and see what we can come up with for a day four of the sauna. But here's a thought. I, someone just commented on one of these vlogs and said, you showed up on my recommended or on my homepage, but an hour is too long. And I said, like, you know, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts, blah, 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 like this, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, you should edit it down to 10 or 15 minutes. That would be cool. Which got me thinking about this idea of what if I just took each of these segments and posted them as their own videos like in addition to this long vlog so that if because I think seeing a video with that's an hour plus is quite daunting and you think oh I don't have time for that even if you know the goal is when you see a video that's an hour long, you're not going to watch it all at once. It would be more something that you put on as like background noise. But perhaps uploading these smaller clips, maybe to a, I think it would have to be a second channel. Yeah, maybe a second channel would be better. And then the goal would be to drive over to this, but I, like over to this like longer version so that you watch it all at once in a day versus, you know, seeing a clip at 10 a.m. then another clip at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. or whatever, like if I shoot three different times. Yeah, like I, I still want to keep it super low key. But it's kind of, it's nice, like thinking out loud, <laughs> and and being able to. I think honestly, it's nice thinking out loud, but it's also really nice being able to share my thoughts and the things that go through my head to that that go to making the decisions that I make for a TikTok video to do as well as it does, right? And and how I think about partnerships, how I think about business, how I think about takes on things in the world that I happen to see on TikTok. <laughs> like the Elon Musk thing earlier. Yeah, I quite like, like that idea. All right, well, I'm going to take a bit of a break. Honestly, I'm going to play Fortnite. <laughs> Rugi's asleep, so play some Fortnite. And then I'll maybe we'll do the, the next planning. Heck yes. Oh, uh, I guess other thing, I found that um, you can get headrest mounts that, well, you get a headrest mount for a camera, and but they're stupid expensive, they're like $50, $60, and it just clips onto each of the poles in the headrest, and then extends out, and I was like, that's crazy expensive, and I just happened to search the wrong thing, and it brought up a load of tablet holders for cars, those are so much cheaper and they have a ball head and I can use something like this from another device I have to then connect the camera and that was like $15 so when that arrives in a few days the morning clips are going to be better all right and I took the battery out of my car this morning that was a pain in the ass and a car battery is like what $200 the hell's going on there <laughs> okay all right I'll see you in a I'll see you in a bit All right, it is, oh, I sound great, don't I? It is 7.40 and I'm gonna take some NyQuil now and then I'll put on my fake Apple Ultra watch. <laughs> I literally bought one from China, it's like $30. Uh, I'll track my sleep and see how quickly I pass out. Get your tongue in there. That's not even like a weird sexual thing. I tell you what, nothing creeps me out more <clears throat> than what's it called? Like cooking TikTok where the dudes are fingering a filleted chicken. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? But it's like, it's, it's serious. Like, you don't really get the idea that they're joking, do you? 
and you're just like just watching it going mm. and you've got some middle-aged woman who's lost her husband wife and kids because she couldn't get off the bottle and she's commenting going oh the things i would let this man do to me just like absolutely rancid <laughs> not that i feel certainly strongly about it all right where's my nut fitting oh i hate hate this kind of stuff you did go down here didn't you yes you did Uh, there you are, you chunky sausage. All right, so I know I said I was going to plan out the day four of the sauna series. And while you know I didn't plan it out how I normally would, I've got a pretty good idea. Oh, wait. I take it this plastic bit. Uh, i got a pretty good idea of where I'm going to go with it in terms of my current sauna being in such bad shape and from all the comments of the from the um the Finns, like the nordics and estonia apparently joined the chat i don't know how they got access to this video but they're all giving me jip as well so day four the the main topic of if it is going to be like, can I use it to reduce my congestion and uh, looking at how bad of a condition the sauna is in? Because a lot of people have been saying, that actually, the sauna I've been using, which is, you know, I'm just explaining what was in the Amazon listing. So it's not like I'm actually trying to deceive people saying, I bought a sauna and it's just some POS. Uh, but I guess I'm starting to learn that the difference in the thing that I'm using versus what a traditional sauna is, is dry heat versus wet heat. And like the sauna I'm using, the reason that you should stay in there for only 15 to 20 minutes at a time isn't because of the heat. It's because there's no airflow, so suffocation. That's good, isn't it? It's good that I knew that going in. Right, and not... Because my original plan was just to go for... Like, because I built this whole series around the partnered post, which was day three, uh... Because I built it around that, my initial plan was to stay in the sauna as long as the it, the um, like portable charger would be powered on. It's a bloody good job I didn't do that. All right, if I remember correctly, there's some other. Oh yeah, this needs to go. Nope, this piece of puby. Needs to go on there. I'll take you off of there. We had some other, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm just gonna use my GPT script I created to go around what I've just described to you. Pretty sure you went on there. Let's fit you onto here, pal. There we go. I told my wife, all right, I'll be like 20 minutes doing this and then I'll come upstairs because we both just put Rugi to bed. Which, hang on, let me just pause on that for a second. That is something that I love doing. I never, I, I always, before we had Ruger, I had no idea what type of dad I'd be. Like earlier in the video, I talked about my highs not being too high and my lows not being too low. And I wasn't ever sure what type of dad I'd be. You know, it wasn't something I would sit awake at, at night thinking about. But I think, like, I just love, I just love 
having a child, I think it's amazing. And I never, if you'd have asked me this three years ago, I, I most likely wouldn't have given you the same response. Um, but every, I'd say pretty much every night, Shay and I will put him to bed together. Am I doing that right? Yes, I am. No, I wasn't. <laughs> we'll put him to bed together. And I, I've seen a couple of TikToks recently, actually, about people that would now be my wife and I's age saying how much they enjoyed their parents putting them to bed because they realized that um, it was this bonding experience as they grew older and it was a chance for the parent and child to just to sit you know, on the bed and, and talk without it being a intervention, let's sit down and talk type of thing. And I want to make sure that we're doing that with Ruger as we grow up as well. Like we, I, we never thought about it from that perspective, but it makes a lot of sense to do that. All right, a couple of other topics that I wrote down. Pod vlog quickie. Um, yeah, this is, it's a thought that I haven't really fleshed out enough to go deep into it, but I'm kind of a, I would say there's somewhat of a selfish streak in me and I have to work hard to, to not, yeah, like I just, maybe I just won't touch on it now because I don't know how to. I don't know how to formulate what I'm, what's in my mind. Okay, that's that one done, that one done. I always take pictures of things like this before I start because like this, this stuff doesn't really make sense to me. I'm not saying I'm, an, I'm a flipping idiot, but it's not intuitive is what I mean. So if, you know, if this was all taken apart, and someone was like, all right, go and put that back together. I'd probably look at them and say, you might just want to, you might just want to spend a couple of years training someone, maybe like a small child first and then bring them in because it will take less time. Oh, th yeah, this was, I think this was, yes, there I had this thought. So I like flying what's called an FPV drone, which is I got a couple of friends who are far better at it than I am. Uh, well, uh, maybe I'll play some of those clips tomorrow from their videos. We'll go through their, their TikToks. And I would love to be good at it. I'd love to be really good at it. But it takes so much work and time to get to where these guys are. And while, you know, as, as much as I'd like to be that good, I have accepted that I'm not willing to put in the effort to get to that place, right? So like I've, I have prioritized, so, um, spending the time to practice is not high enough priority of me, of the things I have going on, and therefore I am okay with not being that good. Right, that, that's where I am in my life at the moment. And I feel like that's, like once you're able to grasp that you are okay with something, like in the understanding of it, you can realize that it's not you just being lazy or giving up on something. You're realizing that you'll prefer to spend time on something else. I, I think that is all good. Everything's attached, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, shall I give it a go? Let me grab the car key. Okay. 
what's really good here is that I'm doing it in a closed garage. <laughs> no different from the sauna. No different from the sauna tent, apparently. Come on, sausage. All right, I'm happy with that. There's probably, well, there's probably not someone watching this, but if there was someone watching this who's a mechanic, probably watching me do this and be like, no, you idiot, you've got to leave the car running for at least 30 minutes. Well, I've never heard that sound before. But that's meant to happen, yeah. This went down here somewhere. What did you clip onto? There, there. Oh no, down here. So something small like this, I'm okay with doing it myself. Like changing a battery, I should know how to do that. But I'm also very upset, accepting of the fact that actually someone else out there is a professional at what they do and knows how to do it far better than I do. And I should pay someone else because I just don't have the knowledge or expertise. And if I mess something up, then it's gonna be pretty bad. Did you, you flipping muggo. Come on, mate. Right. You went down there, didn't you? You are not on properly. Come on, boss. You're in, you're in. We are good. Jobs are good. All right, a few other topics, but we'll save those for tomorrow. All right. Job done. Um, I'll update you in the morning, well, in the next video, with how quickly I fall asleep. Mush. And I'll clean up in the, no, let's just do that now. Otherwise, I'll look at this tomorrow morning and be like, Oliver, you should probably have cleaned up yesterday. Are these in the right order? Yeah, like the number of home projects I've done where small things around the house where I've gotten into it and I'm like, should probably have hired someone who knows what they're doing because I don't know what I'm doing. I've messed something up. I don't have the right tools for it. I mean, it's probably good that I go out and spend a, a huge amount on getting the right tools because then I have it for the next project. But like, <laughs> The, honestly, the number of projects my wife and I have done when we like first moved into the house that we didn't have the right tools for unknowingly and we've been back and forth to the whatever shop like four or five times on a single small project to get different tools. Okay, job done. Well, in that case, see you. Oh, got to get that light. See you tomorrow, chappy.